It's DSP's Worst Gaming Trends of 2012. Number 5. Games without endings. Unless you pay more money for them? DLCs are going to be one of the topics that we're bringing up repeatedly in the worst gaming trends of 2012 because a lot of things revolving around the downloadable content mantra really negatively affected the gaming industry this year. One of the primary things that people complained about were full retail games that people paid full retail price for coming to an abrupt halt and then saying, oh, by the way, this game will continue in a chargeable DLC that you will have to pay for at a later date. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about a situation like Mass Effect 3, where the game did actually have a definitive, all by it, kind of vague and confusing ending that the fans were so upset with after investing so many hours of gameplay into this series over the years that they wanted a better ending. EA and BioWare were actually so moved and, and just influenced by this massive grassroots campaign by the Mass Effect 3 fans that out of you know their own time they decided to design an extended cut DLC further clarifying the endings of the game and having gamers feel at least a little bit better off. I mean sure the original ending kind of sucked but at least the company cared enough about its customers that it created a for free DLC add-on improving the ending of the game. But no, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about full retail games that literally just came to an abrupt stop and or had a seemingly really weak ending just to be announced that guess what? In a couple weeks or a couple months, there's going to be a paid for DLC that gives you the real ending of the game. The two biggest offenders by far were Capcom's Azura's Wrath and Square Enix's Final Fantasy XIII 2. Both of these games reach a critical point in the story, then literally say, Oh well, we're not going to resolve it, you're just going to have to pay us more money to find out what actually happens. Now me personally, I was so angered at this practice this year, that even though I did full playthroughs of the original retail games of both of these uh, titles, I did not purchase the DLCs, and so I have no freaking clue what the actual resolution of these two games are. It is my opinion that if you're going to put down your $60 to purchase a retail game, you should get a complete game. Not a cliffhanger that you're now required to pay more money to actually see the resolution of a game that you've in invested your time and money in. For a game like Azura's Wrath, it was completely unacceptable because the game's campaign actually was very short. For a game like Final Fantasy XIII 2, it's also equally unacceptable because you probably invested so many hours into the gameplay and then to not be given an ending, it's an extreme letdown. Uh, and then, in addition, have you ever heard, ever, of going to a movie theater, paying the ticket price to see the movie, the movie ends right at the end and says, uh-oh, sorry guy, that's the end of the movie for now, but if you come back in two weeks and give us another five bucks, we'll play another 15 minutes of footage and show you how the movie ends. Of course not, there would be an absolute uproar. So right now the gaming industry is the only industry trying to pull something like this off. It's absolutely ridiculous, it's unacceptable, and we as a gaming community need to stand up and say collectively no, we will not buy your DLC ending. So the best way to tackle this is to do what I did. Don't buy these DLC endings and eventually these companies will realize they need to stop trying to milk extra money from the customer. What a disgusting practice. Coming up next, the DLC debacle continues, but for completely different reasons. Check it out.